All right, deadly uh, bombing out of Moscow in Afghanistan's capital on Sunday, raising fears to some that the country is on the brink of a civil war. It comes as experts say Biden's rushed withdrawal led to aircrafts leaving Kabul with empty seats. We saw some of those images, remember? And here's some more. With more than 100,000 Afghan allies left behind. And a lot of Americans, too. Mm -hmm. Kabul also faces plunging blackouts as their new Taliban government fails to pay its electric bill on time, just like a lot of other people. Uh, GOP Senator Tom Cotton served in Afghanistan. He joins us live. Senator, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you. It's good to be back in the studio with you all. Yeah, it's great to see you. Well. Happy here. So, uh, you know, go back about a month ago, uh, you were actually trying to help some of the Afghan allies get out, and you did successfully. But now the news, apparently these airplanes were flying in and flying out empty because people would not allow the Americans and our allies to get on the plane. Yeah, I can tell you exactly why that happened, because I've talked to some of the people who are on the ground. There's two reasons. First, it was so chaotic that even our own citizens, green card holders, or Afghans who had fought with our troops and were approved for a special immigrant visa couldn't get into the airport. So people who were supposed to be on those planes couldn't get in in time to board them. The second reason is they were flying out of the Kabul airport one runway, you get to a point where there's too many airplanes backed up, too many airplanes trying to come mm -hmm. in, and they just had to take off to get them out. If they had been at Bagram, where you had multiple runways, you had more uh, uh, space to park airplanes, you wouldn't have had that problem. It all, goes, yeah, it all goes back to Joe Biden's uh, ill-planned, disorganized, chaotic decision to withdraw from Afghanistan. Don't you think the State Department deserves some of the discredit because Anthony Blinken, according to the Defense Department, it was up to state to organize a lot of this stuff. The reason why these people didn't get out, the reason why the manifests weren't full, was the State Department sat on its hands? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we heard last week from the generals who helped organize uh, this airlift that the State Department refused to uh, call for the evacuation of non-combatants for American civilians and green card holders until the very last minute. The, the military was planning for it as early as April and May, right after Joe Biden made his decision. They were like, hey, we're ready to go. We're ready to start taking people out. Should we do that? Yet Tony Blinken's State Department sat on its hands until the very last minute when uh, the Taliban was on the gates of uh, Couple. What's so infuriating is if you see these images of seats that are just empty, and we remember how we all felt on those mornings when we were reporting on this, hearts go out to all the people that were stranded and left behind and wanted one of those seats. I mean, their livelihood, their lives depended on it. And when you say they couldn't get through the gates at the airport, we didn't have our troops there on the ground to help our American citizens or our allies get onto these planes. Then you read uh, some of them who had credible documents were stopped and were not allowed to get on the planes, while others that hadn't been vetted were allowed through. What's the vetting process yeah. now for all the people that are here that came from Afghanistan? Have we vetted all of them? No, absolutely not, Ainsley. And Joe Biden screwed it up coming and going. So first, we left a lot of people in Afghanistan who we should have gotten out. Second, we brought a lot of people out who we shouldn't have brought out. People who had no particular attachment to the United States, who hadn't fought with our troops. Mm -hmm. And you've seen the reports now of a young female soldier being assaulted at Fort Bliss in El Paso, or sex offenses by Afghan men at Fort McCoy and other offenses. There's really no vetting. Others I mean, it, just walking off yeah, the base. And it's really hard. I mean, it's hard to do in Afghanistan. That's one reason it took so long, is you've got to go interview people face to face. I mean, I mean, Afghanistan's a third world yeah. country. You don't just call up the FBI or the high school, or the local police. So we have almost no way to vet these people. The Biden administration is taking their name, if it is their name, testing against databases. And if they don't come back, it's like, well, they must be fine to go. I, I heard one interview where uh, somebody was interviewing people and said, who exactly did we fly out? And the number was like 75% of the people, the Afghans, were not uh, special immigrant uh, visa holders. In other words, we flew out 75% of the wrong people. Yeah, Unbelievable. And, and it's it basically it's whoever was able to get into the airport, especially in those first chaotic days after the fall of Kabul. Um, again, we have no idea who these people are. We're just taking it on faith. They're using their real name. And then we're testing against incomplete databases and saying, well, if we don't have a record of you being a terrorist, then you must be fine. You're not going to attack Americans. You're not going to commit sex offenses against American women. You're not going to bring any kind of disease or anything else into the country. And you don't have a right under American law to be here. You're not like those brave Afghans with whom I served, who fought alongside us, who risked their lives and their family lives, who we left behind. What if they Cheers. do make it to America? What do we do? Do we send them back? Or are they 
they incarcerated here? What happens? No, I mean, the Biden administration is basically clearing everyone yeah. through. It's just like all those uh, migrants that we saw at the border in Del Rio a couple weeks ago. I mean, basically, the word is out across the world that if you get to our southern border, you can get in. I mean, a lot of these special immigrant visa holders would probably been better off trying to get out of Kabul and go to Mexico and then come to our southern border and wait yeah. to get on a plane and to then, Kabul. Well, you got everybody else coming through. Why not? Uh, through uh, through Colombia to <laughs> Panama and then Costa Rica and then right through. Uh, Senator, great to see you in person. Yeah. Thank All you. Right? Thanks, Thanks for you. helping yeah. us out. Thanks for being back. While you're in New York City, do your Christmas shopping because apparently <laughs> nothing's going to be on the shelves. Yeah, don't November. put it on layaway. I've heard that. I've it. heard that. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Senator.